This week's episode is made possible by our friends at Independent Bank. You can learn more about them at i-bankonline.com. Good morning, Memphis. You're listening to Meanwhile in Memphis on WYXR Radio 91.7 FM. Meanwhile in Memphis is a program dedicated to conversations that celebrate the organizations, initiatives, and people that are shaping Memphis for the better. The Meanwhile in Memphis radio show and podcast are brought to you by New Memphis, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to develop, activate, and retain the city's most important resource, its people. Your hosts today are me, Rebecca Hamm, and my colleague, Anna Thompson. Before we bring our guests in, we have a few event reminders And just a reminder that one of the easiest ways to fall in love with this city is to get connected to the people and the places that make it special. To meet other Memphians, join us at the Link Up Memphis, which will be at the Cossett Library on March 11th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. This is a free opportunity to network with other young professionals in the area. And this event is produced by Milton Memphis Entertainment in partnership with New Memphis. If you are looking for a way to get to know the city, join us at Memphis 101 on March 19th. This is a high-energy event offering an up-close view of Memphis, its people, culture, and more. Whether you're new to Memphis or just want to learn something more about the 901, this event is for you. This event is free and open to the public, but registration is strongly encouraged. You can find more information about both of these events at newmemphis.org slash events. Today, we're chatting with two individuals who are helping to build the distinct and vibrant culture that makes our community increasingly livable and lovable. Both Cynthia Daniels of Cynthia Daniels & Co. and Alan Gumbel of Black Business Association of Memphis are connecting individuals and organizations in our city with the goal of strengthening Memphis as a whole. Let's get started. Good morning, Alan and Cynthia. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. We are so excited to talk to you. We've got some exciting initiatives to share today <laughs> and to some events to get involved in. But first, we want to get to know you. Sure. Uh, Alan, could you give us just a quick bio, who you are, how you got to Memphis, and what you do here? So um, I am Alan Gumble, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Black Business Association. Uh, I'll, it'll actually be 35 years uh, this May uh, since I moved to Memphis. <gasps> Uh, I Incredible. moved here actually to work for the Lower Mississippi Delta Development Commission, which did the first strategic plan for the Lower Mississippi Valley that ultimately became the Delta Regional Authority and uh, got here and got planted. And so I've enjoyed enjoyed the last 35 years. We're glad you're planted and growing here. <laughs> and Cynthia, what about you? So I'm actually a native of Atlanta. Uh, I always tell the story. I tell people um, my plan was to move here just for two years. Then moved back to Atlanta, gained some work experience. Uh, but I moved here in 2009, and this is year 15 for me. I love the nice round numbers, 35, <laughs> 15. I love it. So, um, Alan, can you share a little bit about the Black Business Association of Memphis and your role there? Yes. So the Black Business Association is a nonprofit association of black, of black businesses in Memphis. We are a membership organization, and we function as a black chamber of commerce for black businesses. Uh, Our objective is to help black businesses grow and develop, ultimately to create wealth uh, within the black community. Uh, I'm the chief operating officer of the Black Business Association and have been for the last uh, 13 months now uh, and really enjoy my role. Uh, It brings together two things that I love doing. One, which is helping nonprofits do exactly what they're supposed to do. And two, helping businesses grow and develop and helping entrepreneurs achieve their potential and achieve their dreams. How did the Memphis Black Business Association come to be? So the Black Business Association, again, is in its 50th year. This is a big year for us. Uh, And back in 1974, uh, there was an, uh, there was a group of black businessmen who realized that there was a need for uh, an association to promote uh, themselves and to promote the needs of black businesses in the community. And they said, "We're going to do it." And 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 and, <laughs> and we and we are continuing to do that uh, through the extensive network of partners that we have uh, that are in alignment with ultimately building black businesses building wealth. 
That's fantastic. Uh, so Memphis is a city uh, with a population that's 65 percent black. Mm-hmm. How does that re- parallel with the number of black businesses in Memphis? Is that kind of a mirror image reflection? Do we have an equal number of black businesses or BIPOC owned businesses or is there some disparate? population there uh i no, there isn't uh there isn't 65 percent of businesses are not black owned uh that percentage is is actually far less and that's part of what we see is the long-term need and the long-term opportunity uh within memphis uh the the best way to address poverty certainly employment is key but the key to building wealth is businesses. It's the private sector. Uh, and so while there is a disproportion in terms of the black population in Memphis and Shelby County and the number of businesses, that's what we aim to, uh, that's what we aim to change. So you're building businesses on the back end. Cynthia, you are connecting people to those businesses to celebrate them yeah. and invest in them. Can you talk to us a little bit about your work? Absolutely. So, um, again, I, I share with people when I moved to Memphis, I came with an HR background. So never planned an event, never thought of becoming an entrepreneur. So Memphis truly awakened this passion inside of me. And so living here, I love the culture. I love the food. I love, you know, going to events, but I never really saw black professionals or I didn't really see a lot of black uh, businesses highlighted. So I really just thought You know, I could either complain about it or do something about it. And it truly just uh, empowered me to create kind of mixers so uh, professionals could meet each other. Uh, Memphis Black Restaurant Week came about just because I didn't see uh, some of my favorite uh, hidden treasures kind of really highlighted. So uh, really the work that I do, I pride myself first on creating uh, really cool events for minorities, but I really have grown to the point where I work with different government entities, the city of Memphis, Shelby County. I work with nonprofits all over the country. So it's been amazing to see, um, you know, what truly just started as creating something for my community has grown tremendously. So while you said um, you mentioned that you offer services for all types of events and your clients, but you have some signature events as well. I do. I I narrowed it down to just 10 this year. Oh, oh, just (laughs) just just 10? 10. Just 10. Um, So I do an array of social events. I have one uh, really my favorite, Black Opulence. It it celebrates black chefs. Um, So again, Memphis is a foodie town. So this is an opportunity for smaller chefs and catering companies to really I uh, showcase some of the amazing food they're making. I do a uh, Soulful Food Truck Festival. Again, that came out of a need to really create a space for Black food truck owners. You know, typically um, we didn't have a lot of festivals that included them. If you see one, it's typically at the gas station. Sometimes late nights when you're out on the weekends, you'll see one. So uh, being able to really start that event at Claiborne Temple and now have it at Tiger Lane has been truly incredible. Um, I do a, a Memphis Vegan Festival coming out of the pandemic where a lot of people were trying to eat healthier. So it's been really cool to see so many types of uh, ethnicities come together and, and trying to uh, eat healthier foods in Memphis, right? The barbecue yes, capital. Yes, that's the thing, too, <laughs> Impossible. about that is it feels like <laughs> people think that Memphis isn't for them if they're a foodie, if they don't like pork Absolutely. or barbecue. Absolutely. And Cynthia's here to say no. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> a little bit of everything, you know, galas, concerts, uh, you name it. I've, I plan it and I just love it all. And so Memphis Black Restaurant Week is just right around the corner. It is. This is the ninth one. Wow. I cannot. It doesn't feel real that it's it. already been nine years. Like what is time? It still feels new and exciting it, and every it, time yeah. I see it. <laughs> and I think the really cool thing is that every year you still have new restaurant owners that are brave enough, even coming out of the pandemic. And the owners are even younger. A lot of millennials, they're opening up restaurants. So every year there's something new that people start with and they want to try. But then you have your staples as well. Um, so this year, we're, this is our biggest year. 32 restaurants are participating. 12 of the restaurants are brand new. They've been open a year or less, right? What? Isn't that believable? That, that's awesome. It's just crazy. And so uh, I'm actually also expanding to two restaurants in the Millington area. You know, so you're trying to touch on everybody's neighborhood. You know, we've got the Orange Mound. We've got downtown. We've got Cordova. We've got Carrierville. So why not add Millington to the plate, right? Yeah, Let them in. have some good food. Come on in and play. <laughs> 
So that takes a lot of coordination and strategy. Can you talk to us about kind of where your vision came from to to build that event? It's a great, a great question. So again, um, recognizing Memphis was a a foodie town very early on. I absolutely loved the Italian festival, the Indian festival, Jewish festival, Greek festival, all this delicious food. And I thought, you know, as much as we celebrate other uh, populations and, and other ethnicities, I thought, why isn't something celebrated around the black restaurant community. Um, And of course, one day or one weekend is not long enough. I thought, well, let's just make it a week long. Uh, At the time I was working a full-time job, I thought if I could get 100 people to participate in the Memphis Black Restaurant Week, I would have done something great. Um, I was able to convince eight restaurants to participate. You know, this is, I'm I'm new to event planning. It's really a passion project. I just want to get more people to come um, patronize you. And I thought, again, 100 people come that week. I've done something great. We had over 3,000 people come. It was truly just a social media campaign. It went viral. Uh, People uh, traveled from Mississippi, from Arkansas to participate. $85,000 was spent in one week. So every restaurant quadrupled what they typically make. And that was my aha moment of this is something special. This can't just be a one-time thing. I love that. That's so Memphis. (laughs) It really is. Um, She she identified a hunger in the community. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. And and it was just beautiful to see everybody participated. It wasn't just, okay, if you're an African-American, you're coming. No, it was everyone wanted to celebrate the community. It was beautiful to see. But the same way that um, everybody kind of shows up, like you said, for Indian Fest, Greek Fest, yeah. you know, it's for everybody. It's yeah. for everybody to get a taste of that culture. Absolutely. It's inclusive. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, Alan, the Black Business Association also has something to do with restaurants, too. So I don't want to leave you we, out of this conversation, too, with the business booster. Well, we do. And and one of the things that, that we do enjoy doing is supporting Cynthia's yes. Black Restaurant Week. And Absolutely. so... Uh, you'll see uh, some social media posts come out <laughs> in support of that. Uh, but we also received a grant from the city of Memphis to support the restaurant industry as a whole, primarily those businesses that were impacted by uh, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, with those funds, we provide technical assistance and training uh, specifically to restaurants and other businesses in the hospitality industry. Uh, we provide referrals to them if they need additional technical assistance beyond the specified industry training. Uh, And we also provide a $5,000 grant uh, to those businesses that complete the program. uh, Again, assuming that they meet all of the eligibility uh, criteria, uh, which are one, they have to be inside the uh, geographic limits of the city of Memphis. Uh, They had to have been in business prior to March 3rd, 2020, uh, which was when the pandemic was declared, uh, and uh, they have to uh, be in the restaurant, hospitality, or tourism-related businesses. So we're, we're, it's, a li- it's a little broader than that. Uh, we have actually started our first cohort, uh, and we are actively recruiting for our second cohort, which will begin on June 3rd. And so uh, many of the restaurants, yeah, uh, not, cer- to, certainly to, not the new ones, <laughs> a- a- absolutely. Um, you know, and so again, our objective is to not only just provide them with the five thousand dollar grant. Right. The real key is in the technical assistance, right. the training, and we're also identifying mentors that can help them in uh, growing their businesses. Uh, and so we're we're real excited about the work that we do. Uh, supporting the restaurant industry and specifically uh, supporting Black Restaurant Week. So, oh, that's uh, now I see why you have us here together. <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah, yeah. one stop shop. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, when we think about the economic impact of the restaurant and hospitality industry, do we have an understanding of kind of where that sits in the ecosystem of our local economy? Like, how much of our economy is made up of those kinds of businesses? Uh, I. I know it represents a significant part of it. I don't have uh, a, a data point that I that I could share on that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I couldn't tell you either. Um, I just know, just with any business, especially restaurants, uh, they typically 
uh, don't last more than five years. So once they get at that, that five year mark, I always look at the four way. Um, they really are truly a testament to being able to withstand pandemics, um, being here over time. But um, people have to eat every day. So, again, I wish I knew that data, but that's something I'm certainly going to look up as well. <laughs> Why is it critical for our community to recognize and support minority owned and operated businesses? Because we are the community. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's important for uh, those those businesses to be recognized for the role that they play in those in those communities. It's not just whether or not they're providing employment. They're also centers that um, that communities revolve around. So you mentioned the four way grill. Yeah, it's an institution. Yeah, uh, if you're in South Memphis. That's where you're going to go. Yeah. Um, you, you know, in interstate, and I'm not going to call out all the restaurants, <laughs> but, but, but again, yeah. interstate barbecue, it's identified mm-hmm. with Third Street. I mean, you have restaurants that are, are, are poles of activity around communities mm-hmm. uh, and communities identify with them. Oh, absolutely. And I think for me, it's important because a lot of the minority owned restaurants and businesses they don't have the marketing dollars to advertise like a national brand. Uh, So I think it's always just good to be intentional about making sure you support someone local in the community. To both of your points, though, restaurants really are a community hub. Absolutely. And in more ways than it's as much a public space as anything else, I feel like in our city that you can bump into somebody you know and have those kinds of conversations over lunch or coffee or dinner. Yeah. And that's how those ideas kind of get disseminated and spread and innovation happens in our city. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So neither of you are born Memphians, but you're both chosen Memphians. Yes. What do you think makes Memphis unique? Oh, wow. Uh, so many things, but I, I I hate to be cliche, but this is so tried and true. The grit and grind of Memphis. Uh, it's like no other city. You know, I actually just traveled to uh, Oakland for an event and you know, going there, I enjoyed I enjoyed the people, the food, but I'm like, there's that hustle. You know, it's not there. It's that it's not that um that friendly face, the storytelling, the um people just really wanting to improve their city. I don't feel that sometimes when I travel to other cities. Like Memphis is just special in itself. Not everywhere has that magic. Magic. I like that word. Yeah. It's it's Memphis magic. magic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about you, Alan? I think that uh, it really is the people, uh, the people that uh, welcome uh, people into their community. Uh, you can you, you can talk about Memphis amongst yourselves, but you're going to defend Memphis against everybody as well. Absolutely. Uh, and and in terms of having a cohesiveness uh, among people, uh, I think it's it's amazing. Uh, it's one of the reasons why why we've stuck, and and I think that the the role that Memphis plays in the broader region also makes it special. I mean, it's the, it's the largest community along the Mississippi River, uh, as once you get south of St. Louis, uh, and so it really plays a pivotal role uh, not only in Tennessee's economy but throughout the Mid South. Alan, the Black Business Association assists more than just restaurants and hospitality businesses. Can you talk to us about some of the services that you provide and the the support systems that you build? Sure. And so, again, the Black Business Association is a membership-driven organization. So many of the programs and services that we offer are based upon the demand that our members uh, ask us for. Uh, One of the chief things that... uh, Our members ask us for opportunities for them to get together and networking. And so actually this evening uh, at the Entrepreneur Network Center uh, at 480 Dr. Martin Luther King Avenue uh, from 530 to 730, we'll have our quarterly networking meeting, which is an opportunity for black businesses, black business owners to come together, talk with each other, and and quite frankly, uh, identify opportunities to work together. Uh, to serve uh, other clients, to be able to go after businesses. Uh, We also have an ongoing series of monthly lunch and learns that cover topics as broad as 
you know, how do you how do businesses prepare for tax season uh, and making sure that they stay current on on their taxes? Uh, this past month, uh, we had a session on exports, on helping businesses learn how to export their pro- their products and their services to the broader world, which is where uh, we stop our we we stop circulating dollars among us and bring new dollars into the city. Uh, we also are launching uh, on March 19th our Build to Scale program in partnership with the University of Memphis and Community Lift that is focused on building black technology-based businesses uh, and helping those entrepreneurs, again, uh, define and achieve their visions for, for their own businesses. Uh, so we've talked about BBA Business Booster. Uh, we also have a program called Succession Solutions. I and pardon me, I can go on and on. So <laughs> no, we want to know. If, yeah. if, 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 if I need to stop, this fine. But no, our Succession Solutions program. Uh, we're in the middle of the biggest demographic transition the world has ever seen. We have business owners that are looking to retire, that are looking to transition out of their businesses. We also have entrepreneurs who may not want to go through starting up a business from the ground floor. And so we provide technical assistance and training to individuals who want to purchase businesses, but also uh, businesses who are looking to transition uh, out of their businesses. And quite frankly, one of the bigger challenges is how do you help those families that own businesses transition those to the next generation, Uh, which again is key if the objective is to build black wealth. Uh, so how do you keep those businesses going? How do you help those businesses transition and grow from there? Uh, uh, through our Memphis Restart program, we also have uh, a, leader, a two-track leadership program, one that focuses on helping people identify their career tracks uh, and provide them with the, with the support that they need to define what their pathways uh, are, whether it's within one employer or how to build their career. Um, One of the main objectives, one of the main barriers that black businesses have to success is how do they get the capital that they need to grow and expand? And so our next level leadership entrepreneurship program is specifically designed to help entrepreneurs understand what banks, what lenders are looking for, in a loan application and helping them prepare uh, for those critical meetings with those banks uh, and those lenders to get the capital that they need to grow and expand. What has the response been of individuals and businesses? The response has been, it's it's been overwhelming. Uh, Again, as a membership driven organization, we create these programs because the demand is there. Uh, You know, one of the, one of the, things that we hope to do in this anniversary year is really expand uh, the general awareness and reach that we have. Uh, you know, there are, we, we have a current membership base of a little bit over a thousand or 1100 businesses. That's only a small fraction of the number of black businesses across all industry sectors. Uh, and so uh, reaching those, engaging those, uh, those business people is really is really key to us. And so I welcome the opportunity to be on this podcast to help reach some of them. Yeah. And I'm even thinking over here, um, I don't know, you know, how you recruit your members, but I'm thinking about my food truck festival that I have that ends Black Restaurant Week. I think it would be perfect if you guys were out there recruiting because I usually have about 100 businesses alone just out there. Uh, we will, if you give us the day, we'll be there. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, it. Because again, it, it, A number of the businesses that are in our BBA Business Booster Program Mm -hmm. are food trucks. Okay. Uh, And so there's a lot of overlap and alignment with the work that you're doing and the objectives of our programs. And and our ability to reach those businesses is crucial. Yeah. And and I'm even thinking about a lot of the vendors that are selling, you know, kind of home-based products or, you know, T-shirts, hats, things of that nature – most of them have full-time jobs, and they want to do their business full-time, but they don't know how. So I just, I had an aha moment as you were sharing. Yeah. Alan's a treasure trove of yes. information and resources. Yes, yes, yes. 
What has the impact been of putting an intentional focus on providing dedicated resources in your signature event, Cynthia? Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, I, I could now hey, you trying to throw me like Alan. I mean, I could go on and on about it, but I think if I were to just really talk about the economical impact, I would definitely say Memphis Black Restaurant Week. Uh, in the eight years that we've done this event, uh, it's brought in more than two point five million dollars in the restaurant community. And that's just the one week, right? I'm not thinking about the people that say, well, whoa, Memphis restaurant, Memphis Black Restaurant Week is just too crowded. I'm going to go after the week. Or the people that find a new favorite restaurant and they go again and again and again. So it's just a domino effect that we really haven't measured. But even that 2.5 mil is a huge impact. Um, I think more than anything with my other events, I'm intentional about um, working with newer vendors, newer black um, businesses. And so it does give them a platform to just get in front of bigger audiences and and, um, something that they typically wouldn't have. So uh, I I pride myself in that. And again, just having conversations like today, uh, getting that awareness out so people are intentional about making sure whatever they're doing, um, adding a minority business to the table. Where can we learn more about Memphis Black Restaurant Week? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Uh, you can actually go online at uh, blackrestaurantweek.com. And so March 11th, that's when we'll do the big unveiling of all uh, 32 restaurants. You know, I like to tease it. I can't just give you all 32 today, right? That's no fun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, But we'll, we'll share it then. And then you can also go on uh, Instagram, 901BRW. Uh, Try to keep it very simple there. Um, and then, again, uh, you'll probably just be hearing about it over and over again as we're getting closer to those dates. And that's going to be March 17th through the 23rd. And for anyone who wants kind of a sneak peek ahead of the reveal, <laughs> yeah. can you talk to us about a special event that you're hosting in partnership with New Memphis? Absolutely. So this event highlights four of the restaurants that are participating in Memphis Black Restaurant Week. But I have to tell you a story. One that I'm really excited about is Murphy Smokehouse Barbecue and Breakfast. So they've had a food truck uh, for years. You will see them synonymous at all the uh, festivals all over the city. They're just everywhere. And he decided to invest in himself and open up a restaurant on Main Street. And so it's been open less than 30 days. And it's amazing to see not only is he doing this amazing barbecue, but now adding a breakfast menu. Again, seeing that need because you, there's not a lot of breakfast spots you can stop at on Main Street trying to get to work. So I'm uh, really excited about that particular vendor and just um, everybody that's involved. They're going to be just showcasing uh, sample dishes of what they're going to offer during Black Restaurant Week. Another favorite is Sugar Shack. Uh, Sugar Shack, uh, actually the only black owned restaurant on Bill Street. They have this sugar hot chicken. It is amazing. I, I believe they're going to do macaroni and cheese or their collard greens. But, you know, you have to you have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Well, it, it, it is good to know that Smurfies is now open because I it, tracking him down because he <laughs> because he is in such great demand and he was all over the he city. He is. Uh, but his barbecue stuffed potatoes uh, with veggies are Come just, on. They, 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 are, they are amazing. Just when you think you can't innovate on barbecue. Listen, oh, listen. let me tell you. It, it, it's he, a favorite. But here's the other thing. So he has half of his family are vegetarians. So he has a whole vegan menu and he's part of my Memphis Vegan Festival. And this, I mean, he does this smoked veggie Alfredo pasta. Oh, the lines are wrapped around. You're like, what are you putting in this food? It's crazy. So Every- where so where are we going for lunch today? <laughs> I know, right? It's like only breakfast, and I'm already like you can probably hear my stomach growling oh, now. Tell me. Thing. No, he has everything, so it's exciting to see. So with Black Restaurant Week, are there specials at the restaurants? Can you can we talk about kind of the formatting there? Sure, good question. So of course, with any uh, type of event, you want a deal, you want a discount, right? And so what I share with the restaurant owners and what I want to share with the public, uh, we have a lunch and dinner specials. So you can get two lunch options for $15 at the majority of the restaurants. Some, their pricing is a little bit less expensive, like the breakfast places. So they may have something for like a $9.99 special, $5.99, something like that. For dinner, three courses uh, for $25. So that may be, you know, a salad, entree, dessert, 
Uh, it may start you with an appetizer, entree, dessert, but again, um, just a small sample of what they offer throughout the year. I love it. I love to use the list that you put out every year and just oh, like yeah. keep it tacked to the refrigerator. It's like a roadmap. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you, if you can, I mean, who's going to get to 32 in one week? I would want to meet the person that can do that. But if you can't, you've got all year to get to them. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that is so cool about it is we do get this bump and a sampling of things. Yeah. But it's important to remember that we can support these businesses all year round. There you go. Can and should. Should. <laughs> can and should. <laughs> and I also have to share, you know, New Memphis has been so great with supporting this initiative. And I think back to year one when we only had eight restaurants. So to see the the growth in the community over the nine years and the, the type of offerings. And you know, when I think of uh, again, vegetarians, I got to shout them out because every year they're inboxing me, what are my options? And back then it was, well, you can get a side salad. <laughs> you can get some green beans over here. But now uh, we actually have two vegan restaurants that are participating, Shroomlicious Meals and Son of a Vegan. So there's just, everybody's included now. Yeah. It, what I always appreciate about Black Restaurant Week is it really addresses one of the three critical areas that black businesses need support in. Okay. Uh, I mentioned building bankable business and having access to capital, that me- general media awareness mm-hmm. of uh, of the fact that they exist and their offerings. That's key. And so yeah. that, that marketing is third. And then the third is um, talent. It's, yeah. per, it's people uh, that can come in and represent those businesses as they work with the public. So uh, I, I appreciate Black Restaurant Week in that way, and <laughs> that, that it, it really is meeting uh, one of the critical needs that black businesses have. Yeah, It's absolutely. just general awareness. Absolutely. So talking about the critical needs of um, restaurants and black businesses, um, where is Memphis shining or getting it right in creating access? So I really think it is the the wealth of partners that we've developed uh, that we're already doing good work. So uh, c- certainly the city of Memphis has been a fantastic partner, not only through the funding that they provide, but through their Office of Business Diversity and Compliance, which is helping businesses uh, be able to access government contracting through certifications. That's absolutely crucial. Uh, and, and so that's been a great partnership uh, as, as part of the ecosystem. The Tennessee Small Business Development Center uh, has greatly expanded the work that they do uh, to support all businesses. But again, specifically with black businesses and restaurants, it's been a crucial, uh, it's been a crucial pillar. Um, our partnership with uh, Epicenter Memphis uh, has been fantastic. Um, in terms of being able to connect with uh, technology-based businesses, which is a big emphasis of theirs, but also uh, they are supporting the restaurant industry as well. Uh, and so those, those partnerships to build the ecosystem where there essentially is no wrong door to enter. Uh, I think that uh, one, one of the issues that I think is a barrier to good technical assistance is people will say, well, I don't do that, or they get shunted to the next person and to the next organization and the next organization, and they don't get the technical assistance they they need. Uh, But through really coordinating services with uh, with each other, um, I think that, uh, I think we can have a better impact. Uh, So those, those partnerships is really key. And it's something that we're doing better. There's always room for improvement. That was actually my next question. Uh, in which way Memphis could maybe innovate or activate a little differently? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think <laughs> I do not know. Wait, let me. Uh, we already talked about being intentional. I, don't know, I like Alan's answer so much. I can't think of what we could do better. Do you have? Do you have an, do you have an answer? Uh, well, it's really more for the public okay. is to be intentional in supporting black restaurants and supporting black businesses. So yes, we have our work 
to support our members, but I think the community as a whole needs to recognize the role that those businesses play in their communities, in their lives, and recognize that they are as much a support as they are a beneficiary of the work that those businesses do. Something um, to like kind of bring it back into like the intentional, like what does that mean about being intentional? I feel like what we said a lot during the pandemic was go like, what would your city look like if these people were not there, if these restaurants were not there, if these businesses were not there and go and support those things, whatever it is that you love, that you would be sad if it went away, go, go and support those. things. Yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. Like use your heart, but use your dollars to also support all of these things. And so are there other ways that you think that our listeners could be more intentional about spotlighting minority owned businesses? Uh, Well, so last year, our Building Wealth in the Black Symposium brought Maggie Anderson, uh, who wrote uh, about her experience in buying black for a year. Mm. Uh, And we really used uh, her work to highlight the importance of once those dollars come into a community, they need to circulate. So you go to uh, the, the black restaurants If you have a business and you need uh, to hire a cleaning service, identify a black cleaning service that can come in and do it. Let's keep those dollars revolving and rotating within the community instead of sending those dollars out. It's it's crucial. That's intentionality. uh, And that's it's not always easy. uh, As I think, uh, as Maggie talked about her experience, it's not always easy to find a black business that's capable of meeting that need, but be intentional about doing it. Um, In the case of restaurants, Mm -hmm. we know there are plenty, (laughs) but but, but you, but you, but you still have to be intentional about supporting them. It's Mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to go to a major chain because they're everywhere. Right. It may take a little bit of extra effort to go get a cup of coffee from a black coffee house. Mm Mm-hmm. But be intentional about doing it. Yeah, I even think about there's this uh, surge of black-owned venues that are opening up Absolutely. all over the city. So I think, you know, as much as people, you know, we have our staples in the community, it's okay to branch out and look for other new spaces to try as well when you're hosting an event or, you know, no matter how big or small it could be. Mm-hmm. Is there a database of black-owned businesses or an area, a place where we could go to make sure we're you know, being intentional and looking for folks to support. So you have hit upon something that we're working on. <laughs> it's, uh, only, it's, it's an ongoing thing, right? Yeah, I, I mean, c- certainly if, if you if you wanted to contact us and ask if there are any of our members that are providing a specific service, you could do so. Uh, one of our objectives uh, this year, and I'm, I'm trying to tease it, <laughs> uh, is, Cynthia is to be a, that. It, I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's, well, our marketing manager will, will tell you I'm not the best at marketing. So uh, I, I'm, how to position the tease is not what I'm good at. But, but, but to your point, um, I think being able to create some kind of directory of black businesses is something that, uh, that we're looking to do. Uh, there exciting. used to there used to be a black business directory mm-hmm. that was published in hard form, uh, paper form. Um, we may be looking at something like that in the future. That's exciting. Yay. And where can folks learn more about the Black Business Association? So co- go to bbamemphis.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, all YouTube, all the social media platforms. And again, our marketing manager would just be thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And Cynthia, you've mentioned the way that we can learn more about Black Restaurant Week, but how can we learn more about your work and, and what else you're working on? Sure, sure. So you can find me at cdcoevents.com. I recently have expanded into the Huntsville market. So I'm taking uh, five of my events and doing them simultaneously this year, as well as Memphis. So um, I, I'm I'm just a little bit everywhere, and I'm having fun doing it. <laughs> Do you sleep? <laughs> I don't know. What is that? <laughs> what is sleep? What is rest? It's it's that grit and grind, just like grit you said. Grit and grind. It's I'm that telling magic. you. Oh yeah. So so what what do they say that if you have something to do, give it to a busy person? There you and go. You are a prime example of that. 
You know, you just you wear a lot of hats, right? As an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm curious for both of you, what is on the horizon that you're most excited about for your work and for the city? Uh, well, I guess for me, you know, I think about all the development that has taken place in Memphis since I've, the, the past 15 years that I've been here and especially the downtown community to see uh, just so much uh, investments that have been poured into the community. Um, Tomley Park, it actually was redirected to drive past there this morning. And it's just beautiful to see things like that uh, so the next generation can enjoy them. I, I, again, I think with the Black Business Association in its 50th year, it's really establishing a platform for the next 50. Um, to, there, There is a tremendous amount of opportunity that exists um, with the reshoring of manufacturing and industry and services that's going on. Uh, Memphis is prime. Uh, the black community is primed to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, and so the infrastructure that we're building now along the programs and the partnerships that we're developing is really designed to set the stage for the next 50 years. So that in, in 10 years from now, uh, people can look at this as a turning point of, wow, Memphis has come so far in the last 10 years uh, and it's the result not just of one organization, but all of these organizations working together in concert to take advantage of the opportunities that exist. Love it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now it is time for a little thing we like to call the lightning round. Oh, I know. Don't mm. get uh -oh. don't get scared. <laughs> so um, it is kind of rapid fire questions. So just first thing that pops into your head. Okay. So that's always dangerous. Uh, no, no, it's, it's fun. fun. Oh, okay. It's fun, Alan. See, this is that marketing. You know, it's uh, uh, dangerous. Oh. No, that's fun, exciting. Okay. That's a synonym. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, what is a minority-owned or operated business that listeners need to know about that has not already been mentioned in this episode? So I would say uh, mahogany uh, terrace. Uh, that's actually a new restaurant that's opening up, um, hopefully sooner than later, on the Mississippi Riverfront. So apparently, again, before I got here, there was a river terrace in that was open many, many moons ago. And so, again, being able to take a blighted property, uh, Mahogany Memphis, that is currently in the Chickasaw Oaks Plaza, they're opening a second location uh, they're going to uh, specialize in seafood, which is not from the Mississippi, but I think it's a nice theme, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> to have seafood overlooking the Mississippi, beautiful view of the bridge. So I think in the next 30 days, that'll be the the kind of the talk of the town. Sure. Ooh, yeah. okay. Um, okay, so you stole one that I was thinking no about. Way. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we're uh, in so, sync today, Alan. So, so, so we had we had our uh, our launch of our BBA Business Booster program there uh, back in December. Okay, uh, so it is. So yes, it is a fantastic venue. Yeah. Um, there are so many. Yeah. Um, Name a couple. First ones that pop into your head. Uh, in the tech sector, I'd say Oteca. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. In uh, in another restaurant would be Muggins. Uh, I know that they've recently oh, closed yeah. their location in in Whitehaven, but uh, we use them regularly for our events, and I've always been very pleased not only with the product but with the service that we get. Sure. Uh, so, oh, geez. I, 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 I'd, I'd have to list our members, yeah. uh, but but th those are two that that stick out in mind. And and Oteca does a fan a fantastic job of doing uh, of working in the tech sector, and mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. Well, I'll say one more. Um, again, one of my favorites. I I love a beautifully decorated cake. You know, I, it's, it's just one of my things. With every client, if I'm doing like a anniversary birthday party, we got to get the beautiful artistic cake and the frosted oven is my go-to place for those um i even had a client who want he loves steak so she literally created a steak with the sizzle on it it was nobody wanted to even cut it because it looks so real it's art so the frosted oven you got to check them out Ooh. <laughs> okay so then I'd, I'd, I'd also have to add alcinius 
Oh, uh, okay. That, that, that is... Another institution. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. Yes. Well, on, <laughs> on the theme of food. Yes. Food, right. Where is your... What's your favorite meal in Memphis? Depends on the day, right? Oh, gosh. First meal right now. What sounds delicious right now? For, like the meal in Memphis that you need. So I haven't eaten today. So... I'm going to say my, my go-to breakfast place, Breast of Junipers. Um, and I always go there because it's one of the first places I explored uh, by myself in just a different I was leaving, living in Whitehaven when I first moved here. So I uh, challenged myself to go to different areas every year. And when I went to Brother Junipers, it just it felt like home. It reminded me of uh, kind of my mom's cooking. It's just one of my favorite places to go to. I love that. Uh I'd have to say if it, if I wanted barbecue, I'd have to go to Interstate mm. uh, or Neely's out on Winchester, which in the area where I live. That would that would be probably my favorite. All righty, yeah. What is the best way to unwind from a stressful day? <laughs> I unplug because I'm constantly on, and I'm actually an introvert. I I know after especially after a big event I literally just want to be in silence on the couch maybe Netflix it for a while but just enjoying my thoughts seriously. What about you, Alan? For me, it, because I'm also an introvert, <laughs> uh, it's going and sitting on my back patio oh, no. uh, with a book that I've been wanting to read and just as you say unplug. But. Yeah. Just just being out, getting some fresh air, just enjoying my backyard. Nice. What's one word you would use to describe our city? Wow. Let, <laughs> just one word. I'll give, you, I'll give you some time to think. Okay. I, I would just say, it, it's actually, I'm going to cheat. It would be, <laughs> he got to finish. It, 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 we'll it, give you a it, sentence. It would be dynamic potential. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. Okay. I'm I'm going to go with inspiring. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank you both for joining us today. You've given us so much good information, so many resources, so many things, so many meals that our listeners need to go and get and support <laughs> and fill your heart, your mind, and your stomach up from this episode. Um, is there anything that we did not cover today that y'all were hoping to share? Uh, I think for me, uh, just... Again, being intentional about supporting minority-owned businesses and that, um, you know, I am looking forward to uh, up-and-coming uh, entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm, I'm not always available to mentor, but mentorship is important. And if there are people looking to become an entrepreneur, if I can refer you to a, another entrepreneur in this space, or again, I would imagine BBA has uh, mentorships available. Um, you're never too old to start a business either. Love it. Absolutely. I, I'd say the you can complain about what you don't have or build what you want. And if we want to have a prosperous Memphis, we can't expect anybody to give it to us. It's something that we have to work. We have to spend our own effort, spend our own sweat and tears to build. Whether it's a business whether it's your career, whether it's anything. You can complain about it or you can build it. Grit and grind. Thank you so much. Independent Bank is celebrating 25 years of sharing your stories, building your dreams, and serving you heroically. Find out how iBank can help you achieve your financial dreams at i-bankonline.com. Member FDIC.